your Bibles, open them to Proverbs chapter 10. Proverbs chapter number 10. We're going to use our Bibles approximately a half a dozen times this morning. And uh, we're going to begin in Proverbs chapter number number 10. Y'all glad to be here this morning? All right. Are y'all still awake? All right, man. You get enough coffee? I, uh, you don't drink coffee, do you? I do, man. I'll, I'll drink it for you then. I'll drink it for me and you both, and that way I'll be better off for it. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, all righty. Uh, Proverbs chapter number 10. Again, have your Bibles handy. We're going to uh, use it about a half a dozen times, and so we're going to begin in Proverbs chapter number 10. All right? Chapter 10, verse 29. One verse we're going to read at this time. Proverbs 10, verse 29. It says, The way of the Lord is strength to the upright, but destruction shall be to the workers of iniquity. I want to talk to you about this thought, strength to succeed. Strength to succeed. That first phrase of Proverbs 10, verse 29, the way of the Lord is strength to the upright. Let's have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for allowing us to be here this morning. I love you, Jesus, with all of my heart I do. And I thank you for the privilege and honor that you've given me to preach your word. So, Lord, as I preach today, would you please give me the power of the Holy Spirit? Would you give me the mind of Christ so that I can say exactly what you once said and not say anything you don't want said? And I pray for every person here, those who are watching online. Lord, please give us all ears to hear, heart to receive, and a mind to comprehend. And, Father, please do a work that only you can do in our midst. And all throughout the day, touch hearts, change lives. Those that need to be saved and baptized, help them to make those decisions. And we'll give you thanks, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Strength to succeed. Listen carefully. One of the reasons that people quit serving God or even living for God is because they try to live for God without getting strength from God. This is so, 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 so important. Um, we all need strength in order to succeed. Um, maybe you've not heard this term before, but there's uh, when people quit, when they give up, when they stop living for God, stop serving God, oftentimes they use the expression, I'm just burned out. I'm just burned out. And um, the reason people do get burned out is because they don't have strength. They don't get fueled up. It's kind of like running out of gas with a car. You know, you're driving down the road, and then all of a sudden, you, you, your car stops running, and, and you look at the gas gauge, and you're on empty. Well, if you don't fill up, if you don't put fuel in the tank, you're eventually going to run out of, you're not going to be able to go anymore. And, and that's, that's basically uh, what happens when a Christian uh, is living for God, goes to church, serves God, and, uh, and then doesn't you know, live for God anymore. A lot of times, not all the time, but a lot of times it's because they run out of steam. They don't have strength. And, um, and so um, the honest, simple truth is if we're going to succeed in the Christian life, we need strength. We need strength. Now, one of the one of the deficiencies of the of of mankind is that we think we, we've got all the strength we need on our own. We can just do it. You know, we'll take care of it. We'll you know we're we're, we're, we're self sufficient. We're uh, you know we just we have our own strength and we're going to do it. Well, in life and in general, that's not a bad thing. You know, obviously, when it comes to responsibility and paying your bills and taking care of your family and you know things like that. I mean, all of that is fine and dandy. However, when it comes to this spiritual life, you cannot, you cannot succeed on physical strength alone. You just, you just can't. The Bible says the spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. So your flesh and my flesh is weak. The spirit is where we need to gain our strength. And we, cause this is a spiritual life, the Christian life, and we're in a spiritual war against the devil and we need strength to succeed. How many of you have ever gone on a hike in the mountains, in the Rocky Mountains. Boy, I love doing that. I love doing that. But when I'm out of shape, it's hard. <laughs> you know? I mean, my wife and I, you know, and my son Jack, on uh, uh, the day after Thanksgiving, we, uh, we spent the night, Thanksgiving night, in a bed and breakfast uh, up in Estes Park. And then we, on Friday, went into the Rocky Mountain National Park and went on a hike. And, uh, boy, it was a little challenging getting up that hill. I mean, it was, I think, uh, if I remember correctly, we, we started at the bottom of the hill, 
and, uh, and, and then went up, you know, the mountainside. It was, it was a 700-foot uh, incline is what they said it was. Now, that's, that's supposed to be pretty steep, right? It's not just a piece of cake, walk a park, you know. And uh, but, but by the time, we were so glad to get up to the top. But there was a few times that we had to stop and just sort of catch our breath and uh, just, you know, get, get, get our mind going again. And my wife is the one that picked the, the hike, you know. She said, let's go on this trail, right? And halfway up the trail, she's like, who picked this trail? What? the world what person told us to go on this trail they were wrong they were so foolish you know and uh, but physically if you want to I, I remember one time um, I, 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 me and my boys not my wife but me and my five sons went on a 14er I think it was uh, Long's Peak or Torrey's Peak it was one of the two I can't remember which one right now but they're together you know and um, and so I think it was Torrey's Peak if I remember correctly but we went all the way up to the very very top and it took hours, you know. That was a Memorial Day hike and uh, with uh, the Alleys, uh, Gordon Alley and his family. And I loved it. Had a great time. And, uh, but, but one of my boys, like, went up halfway and said, nope, I'm going back. <laughs> and turned around and went right back down. And uh, just did not have the physical strength uh, to be able to do that. But if you're ever going to do on a hike in the mountain, uh, then you've, you've got to have strength. How many of you have ever run a marathon? A race of any kind like that. You've run a race, you have? All right. Well, in, in order to do a marathon, bless God, you, you've got to have strength. You've got to have physical ability. You've got to be in shape, and you, or else you're just simply not going to do it. You're just, you're just not going to do it. I remember watching on, I mean, you see all kinds of videos on the Internet now and um, of, of things because it's just the way the world is. But I remember watching this race. This lady was running a marathon. And she got real close to the, to the uh, 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 finish line, and her body just said, enough, and she just collapsed. I mean, like, we're talking 100 feet or 200 feet or whatever it was before the finish line, and she just collapsed, and she was just laying there on the ground, and she could not move. And then uh, racers were passing her by and all that, and she lost. But one of the racers came along, picked her up, and helped her, you know, to cross the finish line. Uh, but when your body just says, that's it, I'm done, you know, then it's hard to do things like run a race, take a hike in the mountain, or how about working a job? Sometimes there are jobs that we can work. I know Brother Reyes, you, you had employment years ago with, you did concrete work, and boy, how hard that was on your body, huh? And uh, physically demanding, right? And uh, if you don't have strength to work your job, you're, you're, just, you're just not gonna succeed, you know? I mean, some, some jobs that you work are physical. I mean, they are just like demanding of your body every single ounce and strength that you have. And when you when you work those kind of jobs, you have to have physical strength in order to succeed. Well, it's the same thing when it comes to the Christian life. You need strength in order to succeed in the Christian life. You will never succeed as a Christian if you don't have strength from God. And so let me give you four thoughts this morning about how to get strength to succeed. Go to Psalms 84. Turn in your Old, Te uh, Old Testament now, uh, one book to the left of where you're at in Proverbs, Psalms 84, and we're gonna read verses one through 17. Y'all glad to be here this morning? I'm glad you're here. By the way, just as much as you need strength to succeed, I need strength to succeed. Um, I, I have never uh, <laughs> realized how much strength I need than I, than I do now as 27 years and three months being the pastor of this church. I, I, I'm telling you, if I don't get strength from God, I will fall flat on my face, and I know that. Um, Psalm 84, look at verse 1. How amiable are thy tabernacles, O Lord, of hosts. My soul longeth, yea, even feigneth for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh crieth out for the living God. Yea, the sparrow hath found an house, and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may lay her young, and even thine altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Now look at verse 4. Blessed are they that dwell in the house, in thy house, they will be still praising thee, Selah. Blessed is the man, watch this now, whose strength is in thee, in whose heart are the ways of them, who passing through the valley of Baca make it a well, the rain also filleth the pools. Look, it says in verse 7, they go from strength to strength, 
Every one of them in Zion appeareth before God. Now, it says here in verse uh, 5, blessed is the man whose strength is in thee. And then verse 7, it says they go from strength to strength, every one of them. Now, what's the key thought? The key thought is verse 4. Blessed are they that dwell in thy house. All right, so number 1, if you're taking notes, write this down. Strength to succeed is found in the house of God. Write that down. Number 1, strength to to succeed is found in the house of God. There's just something about coming to God's house where it God just gives you strength. I mean, it's it's real. It's not made up. It's not a fairy tale. It's not fictitious. It's not something like, oh yeah, you know, the pastor's just trying to get you to come to church. No, listen carefully. The more you come to church, the more faithful you are to the house of God, the more strength God gives you to be able to live for him. Look, there's times in your life, if you'd be honest with yourself, where if you missed church on a Sunday and then Monday came around, you were just drained. You just, it, something was missing. You didn't have that oomph or that, you know, it was just harder to go to work and harder to spend time in your family or in your life. Why? Because you missed out on the strength that you could have received when you w would have come to church. Um, so many times over the years, now I don't ever miss church. I mean, I've, I, I've missed church maybe a half a dozen times in 20 27 years and three months, and the only reason I've ever missed church is because of illness, or one time I had a baby born on Sunday night, and my wife, for some reason, wanted me to be there in the delivery room with her when uh, when our son was born. I don't know. I don't understand that. She wouldn't let me go to church that night. But anyway, other than that one night um, where I missed a Sunday night church service because of a baby being born, and then about a half a dozen other times uh, altogether uh, with, with illness, like I had COVID once or twice, actually. I couldn't come to church. I had no pneumonia once, and I missed a Wednesday night church service because of that. Um, but in 27 years, three months, about a half a dozen services over all that time. Now, uh, some people, though, have told me that when they just simply don't go to church on Sunday, they feel it on Monday. I mean, they're like, ugh. They're like, ugh, dragon, or maybe the devil's uh, fighting them a little bit harder. But every time you come to church, if you come with the right attitude, the right heart attitude, every time you come to church, God will give you strength to succeed. It says there in verse number, number four, blessed are they that dwell in thy house. And then it says in verse five, blessed is the man whose strength is in thee. God gives you strength. Look, God loves his house more than you and I do. This house is important to him. The Bible says that God, when Jesus was on the cross, he shed his blood to purchase the church. That was one of the reasons. There's two reasons why Jesus shed his blood. Number one, to save our souls from hell. Number two, to purchase the church. That's what it says in the Bible. And so the church is really important to Jesus. And by the way, do you all know who started the, the first church? It was Jesus himself. Jesus never does anything bad. He never does anything foolish. He never does anything that's useless. The church has value. Every time you come to church, God gives you strength. He really does. He gives you strength. There's something special about God's house. Those who are faithful have more strength. Look at Psalm 92 along the same line. Just a few pages to the right. I want you to see this now. Psalm 92, look at verse 13. Psalm 92 and verse number, number 13. In Psalm 92, in verse number 13, the Bible says this, those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. Ready? They shall still bring forth fruit in old age. They shall be fat and flourishing. Now, why is it that someone who's in old age is still bringing forth fruit for God? Why? It says in verse 13, they're planted in the house of the Lord. You see, people who just say about God's house, look, I don't wake up ever, 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 ever on a Sunday and say, I wonder if I'm going to go to church or not today. No, I'm planted. I mean, I'm planted I'm here. This is where God wants me. This is where God, God's will is for my life, and I'm planted. Then there are some people, they don't, they don't necessarily wake up every day and think that, but here's what they think. Well, I wonder which church I'm going to go to. Like, all churches are okay. Like, well, it doesn't matter what church you go to. Yeah, it does matter because God has a will for you. And see, a church is more than just a building. It's a family. 
And I just think that if God's called us to, to be together as a family, let's just stay together, you know? I mean, this is our family. It's, it's, you know, well, there, there are other churches that preach the Bible. Oh, I'm sure there are. There are churches all around the, the country that you could move to and go to that preach the Bible. But, but God, I believe he plants us and, and places us in a family, and then we should stay together as a family. Those that are planted in the house of God, those are the ones who get strength from the Lord, strength to, to succeed. If you ever find yourself losing strength, if you ever find yourself um, not having enough um, oomph to keep going for God, maybe you should just check your church attendance, see if you have been missing. Maybe you can start coming more often. You know, people that come to church one hour a week or one service a week, you only get one service of strength, but you have four different services a week that you can come to different services and then get strength there's sunday morning there's sunday school there's sunday night and then there's wednesday night the more times you come the more strength you get all right so what do i need where can i get strength to succeed in my christian life number one strength to succeed is found in the house of god number two look at isaiah 40 and verse 31 a very very familiar passage of scripture isaiah chapter 40 in verse number number 31. Here's the second way that you can get strength from the Lord to succeed. Isaiah chapter 40 and verse uh, number, well, let, let's, um, let, let's start in verse number 28, shall we? Uh, let, let, let's do that. Let's just read the whole context here. Hast thou, verse 28, hast thou not known, hast thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary, there's no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increaseth strength. Even the youths shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But, look what it says, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. So what is God saying here? Number two, write this down if, you wanna, if you're taking notes. Um, strength to succeed is found in serving the Lord. In serving the Lord. Now watch this carefully now. This verse has been misunderstood by many over the years. It says, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. It does not mean those that sit in a chair and wait for God to give them strength. We'll get it from the Lord. No, that's, that's not what it's talking about. I know that there are times in the Bible where the Bible says we should wait on the Lord as far as give him his opportunity to work behind the scenes. Don't, don't rush, rush into something. Don't jump the gun. Uh, just, just let God work, and, and that principle is fine. But that's not what this verse is talking about. When it says, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. That word wait is the root word of the word waiter or a wait person, all right? How many of you like to eat at restaurants? You like to go out and eat? I think it's awesome having someone else cook for you other than yourself sometimes is nice. But when you go out to eat, what happens? You walk into a door, the first thing they do is they ask you, why aren't you, why aren't you wearing a mask? Anyway, uh, but you walk... <laughs> He said, I don't wear a mask. I don't, you know. And uh, I, I remember one time I, I went to Red Lobster here in town. Boy, they must have been having a real bad day. And uh, she goes, I, wa we, I walked into the, the room, uh, the, the restaurant, with uh, a guest preacher, and uh, we weren't wearing masks. And she goes, do you have a mask? You ought to wear a mask. I went, no, I don't have a mask. And she goes, well, I don't think we have one. I said, okay, okay. So I pulled out my handkerchief, and uh, I went like this. And... Uh, and went just like that. And I said, okay, I'm ready to go. And uh, she went and got her manager. And the manager came out and said, that's not a mask. I said, what do you mean? My, 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 my nose is covered. My mouth is covered. It goes all the way down past my chin. This is serving the purpose of a mask. I mean, you all know what gator masks are. You know, this is the exact same material as a stinking cotton picking corn pulling gator mask. And boy, she got mad at me. She's like, we have to follow the rules. I said, ma'am, my face is covered. What's your problem? I mean, what in the world? And, uh, and she goes, fine, I'm just going to sit you. And she put it, she, the manager, she took us to the table and slammed our, our menus down <laughs> and walked away. And I'm like, what is your problem? My whole face was covered. Anyway, so 
because of coronavirus, that's the first thing that happens. But anyway, uh, other than that, when you walk in, there's a person there that wants that this is a server uh, um, or a host, and they take you to your table. And then a waiter or a waitress will come to your your table, and they'll say, "May I take your order, please? Would you like some drinks? Do you want, you know, how would you like your your uh, your, your steak cooked, or would you like dessert?" And they come back and forth. They come and they, you know, can I refill your water? Do you want some more lemonade? I mean, I mean, is everything all right? Can I get anything for you? And the whole time that you're there, they are waiting on you. And here's what God says. Those, they, that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. God says those of you that every day you come to God and say, God, can I take your order, please? May I do something for you? Is there anything I, that you would like? I would love to serve you today. And God says, when you live your life waiting upon the Lord, serving him, it says here, you, you will renew your, God will renew your strength. You'll mount up with wings as eagles. You'll run and not be weary. You'll walk and not faint. Strength to succeed is found in serving the Lord. Now, listen this carefully. If you get weary in the Christian life, why don't you become God's waiter? Just serve him. Just, just get busy serving God. Say, Lord, I, I'm going to serve you today, and, and then do so. And God will bless you. God will use you. He'll give you strength. Listen to this statement. Um, he will always give you strength if you, have, if you want to serve him, if you want to do something for him. But listen to this statement. God does not give strength to those who do not want to do anything for him. If you're sitting here and saying, I, I, I just want others to serve me. I'm not interested in doing anything. I just want to sit and I just want to receive. All right. Well, if you just sit and receive and others serve you, God says, there's no reason for you to have strength. You don't need strength to sit. You don't need strength to let others serve you. He says, but if you're interested in serving me, you know what God says? I'll always give you strength. I'll make it so you run and you're not weary. I'll make it so that you walk and you never faint. And when you start slipping in your strength, he says, I'll renew your strength. Okay, let me give you another example. Um, have you ever had a car that the battery died and you couldn't start your car? So what happens when the battery dies? Well, you get out jumper cables and you take your battery, hook the jumper cables onto that, and you find a battery that has you know, life in it, <laughs> and you hook your other end of the jumper cables to that, they turn on their car, you turn on your car, and your car starts. Why? Because you, you, you hooked up to someone else's energy. And you know what God says? He says, I'll renew your strength. What that means is he goes, I'll let you take your jumper cables, put it on your battery, and you can hook the other end onto my battery. And you know what's, what's great about God's battery? It has the most strength that ever of any battery in the whole universe. I mean, I mean, I'm telling you, you know, God says, I'll let you get charged from my energy source. And that's what it means to renew your strength. It means you, 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 God doesn't just come down and say, I'll just help you get strength again. No, he says, if you need a jump, hook up to my battery and I'll renew your strength. And that's exactly the application. So guess what God says? If you want to get busy serving him. Now, serving him can be done two ways. One is, uh, is in church. You know, get, get busy doing something here. Like, like get involved in a ministry. Do, do something for him. And then secondly, it's just life in general where you, you try to be a blessing to other people. And that's how you serve. The Bible says is you've done it unto the least of these, my brethren. You've done it unto me. So God says when you serve others just in life in general, instead of just serving yourself, then God says, I will give you strength. Number three, look at Zechariah chapter 10. Go to the book of Zechariah, it's right before Malachi. Zechariah, Malachi, there you go. That's where the, the song led me. And um, right before Malachi is Zechariah. And look at chapter 10. We're going to read three verses. We're going to start in verse number 5. Zechariah, chapter number 10. Are you there? Zechariah? Okay, look at verse 5. Watch this now. And they shall be as mighty men which tread down their enemies in the mire of the streets in the battle. And they shall fight because the Lord is with them 
and the riders on horses shall be confounded. And I will strengthen the house of Judah, and I will save the house of Joseph, and I will bring them again to uh, place them, for I have mercy upon them, and they shall be as though I had not cast them off, for I am the Lord their God and will hear them. Now jump down to verse 12. And I will strengthen them in the Lord, and they shall walk up and down in his name, saith the Lord. Number three, write this down. Strength to succeed is found in closeness to God. Strength to succeed is found in closeness to God. All right? So the children of Israel were basically being punished and um, they were they were their enemies had overtaken them and they were away from God and um, but then God came and said look it's all going to change he goes I'm going to I'm going to give you um, I'm going to let you win in this war in this battle he says in verse 6 I'm going to strengthen you he says I'll bring you again to your place I'm going to have mercy on you as, and, and as though I had not cast you off. And uh, he goes, I'll be your God. And um, because they were cast off, they were defeated, they were in a bad place, but they were coming back to God. They were getting right with God. And he said in verse number 12, and I will strengthen them in the Lord. Now, what does that mean? That means you get strength directly from him. Now, how does that happen? That happens by being close to God. That happens from spending time with God. When you're close to God and spend time with him, he will always give you strength. You know what the, the average Christian in America does? They live their lives ignoring God. The average Christian. When did you last read your Bible before you came to church this morning? Can you remember when the last day was? Was it yesterday? Was it a week ago? Was it a month ago? When's the last time you spent time in God's Word? Now, with our modern technology, um, you don't have to just read your Bible. You can actually have it on your cell phone being read to you. Um, the, the, I used to say you can buy um, the Bible on CD and um, plug it into a CD player. But those are fast, uh, quickly becoming a thing of the past. I mean, I can't, I, I, my, my dad bought me a truck in 2019, two years ago, and uh, it doesn't even come with a CD player anymore. I mean, how angry was I about that? I mean, what in the world? I'm like, no CD players? What's going on? And, um, and um, the, 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 the truth of the matter is I, I have all these CDs I bought over the years. I got like 120 Christian music CDs, and now I can't play them in my truck. But anyway, uh, so I had to sign up for Amazon um, no, uh, yeah, Amazon Music or something like that. Anyway, crazy, crazy. But now I got 1,800 songs on my phone, and I can just Bluetooth it to my, my uh, sync it into my, my truck. But the point is, huh, I got sidetracked there just a little bit. Hey, put that rabbit back in. Don't let that rabbit run down the trail. I'll chase it. All right. But the fact of the matter is, uh, you can listen to the Bible on audio. Um, I've, I've taught this for years, and I just, I, 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 I did it this week. Um, I, I, I took my, my, my cell phone uh, next to my, my, my nightstand next to my bed and I, I plugged it into a power source. I have one of those. Man, modern technology can be so cool sometimes. I have this plant, a plant. I have this lamp, a lamp that has a USB input right in the lamp, right? So as long as the lamp is plugged into the wall, the lamp doesn't have to be on as far as light. But uh, I plugged in the USB and then plugged into my phone, and then I just played the Bible all night long last night, just, just while I was sleeping. And, um, and I just put it softly in the background. I, it wasn't loud enough to keep me awake, but it was loud enough so that my subconscious mind, while I was sleeping, could hear it. And um, I, uh, a couple nights ago I did it. I went from Matthew chapter 1 to... I think John chapter 12 is, is it where I think it ended, all, you know, one night's sleep. And then last night, it, I, I, I was listening to it, else, uh, but I think I started in John 14. 
I went all the way to the First Timothy chapter, I think two or three or four, First Timothy, and uh, just just it played all night long, just all night long, just softly in the background. And uh, while I, you know, when you're sleeping, you know your mind never goes to sleep. You know that, right? Your body rests, but that's why a bump in the night, a noise, it'll wake you up because your mind is alert. It, it you know, when you're a parent and uh, you have a baby in a crib in the, in a room next door, you're sleeping, but boy, if that baby moves or the baby starts to cry, you know, you wake up. Those of you that have uh, dogs or, you know, if you're, if you're a cat lover, for, I just I cannot understand you. Uh, but, uh, but if you, <laughs> I have dogs and, and, and we've kennel trained them so they, they sleep or spend the night in the kennel. And, uh, but every once in a while, if they have to, like, go to the bathroom or if they're not feeling well, they have to get sick, you know, you know, they'll start whining, and I'll wake up. I mean, just like that, 2 o'clock in the morning, 3 o'clock in the morning, 4 o'clock, whatever time of the day it is. But so your, your mind never goes to sleep. Wouldn't it be great, you know, if you just, like, plugged your phone in, turned the volume down low enough so it didn't keep you awake, but all night long your, your mind is listening to the Bible, you know, just listening. I mean, that's not supposed to be your main consumption of Bible, but, but it doesn't hurt. In fact, it helps a great deal while you're sleeping. Um, the fact of the matter is, is uh, when you spend time with God, he gives you strength. When's the last time you prayed? When's the last time you prayed? And I don't mean just praying like while you're doing other things like driving. I mean, some of us need to pray while we're driving. <laughs> but uh, because of how you drive or because of how people around you are driving. <laughs> oh, God, help me. <laughs> help me get from point A to point B without dying. Uh, but the fact of the matter is, when's the last time you went into your prayer closet? When's the last time you just spent 30 minutes with the Lord talking to him? You know, the more you spend time with God, the more you read your Bible, the more you pray, the more strength he gives you. I have never read my Bible. I have never spent time in prayer, but afterwards, I felt better. I felt more strength. I felt close to God. I felt like I had energy to live for God. People who don't have strength to succeed, oftentimes they just don't read their Bible and they don't pray. Sometimes people think, well, I get my Bible and prayer time at church. Well, I mean, that's okay, that's better than not, but I mean, that's not enough. You know, what, what happens today in God's house as far as Bible reading and prayer is not going to be enough to make it on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. I mean, it's just, it's not going to be enough. Uh, you need to develop that closeness with God. You need to be able to spend an hour with him. God bless you. Uh, you need to be able to read your Bible and, and get wisdom from God on your own. You need to be able to pray and spend time talking to God and be able to see answers to prayer. Man, whenever God answers my prayers, oh, it's like a shot in the arm. I just like, wow, look what God did, you know. And Thank you, Lord, so much. And uh, I had a prayer that was... Uh, about a week and a half ago, I was praying, and then God answered it, and I was just like, oh, my soul, this is wonderful. And I felt so good inside and energized because God did answer my prayer, and a major prayer. Now, I pray every day, you know, talk to him about all kinds of things, but sometimes there are prayers I pray that are a little bit more major, like, oh, God, help the Broncos beat the Chiefs tonight. Oh, what a miracle that would be. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> amen. <laughs> But, uh, I, hey, the Raiders should be rooting for the Broncos to win tonight because the Chiefs are ahead of the Raiders. But you might be rooting for it. All right. So, uh, but at any rate, the, the, the fact of the matter is, is I've never spent a season of, of time in God's Word and in prayer. But afterwards, I've never spent a time that I didn't feel better for it. Spiritually, I felt stronger. I can do this. I can live with God. I can live for God. I can do this. And, and you can. Number one, strength to succeed is found in the house of God. Number two, strength to succeed is found in serving the Lord. Number three, strength to succeed is found in closeness to God. Number four and last, go back to Proverbs chapter 10, our uh, starting point today. Proverbs chapter 10 and look down verse number 29. Proverbs chapter number 10 and verse number 29, look what the Bible says. In Proverbs chapter 10 and verse number 29, it says this, The way of the Lord is strength to the upright. 
The final thought I want to give you is this. Number four, strength to succeed is found in the way of the Lord. The way of the Lord. Now, what is the way of the Lord? Well, think of a highway. Think of a, of a, of a traveled road. That's the way. Now, what is the highway of the the Lord or the way of the Lord, it's, here's what it is. It's living in God's will for your life. It's living like the Bible teaches a Christian is supposed to live. It's living a holy life, a life that is separated from the world. The way of the Lord is like God's course of life. It's his mode of action. God says, when you are in the way of the Lord, you will always have strength to succeed. When do people lose that strength? When they get out of the way. When they no longer are in God's will. When they decide, I'm not going to live like the Bible teaches a Christian is supposed to live. When they say, I'm not going to be holy, in fact, I'm going to be unholy. If they say, I'm not going to be separated from the world, I'm going to go right smack dab into the world and live like the world. When they say God's course of life or mode of action is not for them and they're going to follow the philosophy of the world, like you're either sitting here today and you have a biblical worldview or you have a secular worldview. Those are the two options. You know, what's your course of action, course of life and mode of action? Do, do you have a biblical worldview or do you have a secular worldview? I, I'm always amazed at Christians that embrace a secular worldview, especially when it comes to liberal politics. I'm just like, really? Really? I mean, you're a Christian and you embrace the secular worldview of life? That's just not good. But, but if you choose not to live in God's will, not to live like the Bible teaches. If you choose to live unholy and worldly and you choose a secular course of life, no, you're not going to have strength to succeed. God's not going to give you strength. God God wants you to fall flat on your face so you'll come back to him. Think of the story of the prodigal son. The prodigal son in the Bible came to his father and said, Father, Father, I want all my inheritance. I want it now. Not, I don't want to wait until you die. I want it now. And the father said, for whatever reason, okay, son, here's your inheritance. It's yours. He said, thank you very much, Dad. <laughs> Pops. And just took off. The Bible says he went into the world and he spent his entire inheritance. Now, how did he spend it? It says he wasted it. He wasted it. And then he came to a point where he had nothing and nobody in the world cared for him. And the only job he could get, the only job he could get was a job feeding the pigs in the pig pig pen. And here's what his employer said. Feed my pigs first. And when they're done eating, you can have what's left over. And here he is. He's feeding himself off of the husks that are left over from the pigs. And he says to himself, what am I doing here? The Bible says he came to himself and he said, my father's servants have it better off than I have in the world. He goes, I'm no more worthy to be called my father's son. I'm going to pick myself up and go back home and say, dad, would you please hire me as an employee? Because you treat your employees better than the world treats their friends. You know what the prodigal son did? He fell flat on his face. Why? Because he wasn't living in God's will. He wasn't living like the Bible taught. He wasn't holy and separated from the world. He didn't didn't want to live in God's course of life and mode of action. And he found himself flat on his face. So a Christian that leaves the will of God, they get no strength from God. God doesn't want to strengthen you to succeed away from God's will. He wants you to come to your senses and realize how bad it is out in the world. 
He wants you to come home. And every time you find yourself living in God's will, living like the Bible teaches, wholly separated from the world, following God's course of life or mode of action, he'll always give you strength to succeed. Let's look at one last passage, and then we'll finish the sermon. Look at Jeremiah chapter number 5, verses 4, 5, and 6, would you? Jeremiah chapter number 5, and this will be the last three verses we look at, and then I'll give you some closing thoughts, and then uh, we'll have our invitation. Jeremiah chapter 5, and look at verse 4. Look what it says. Jeremiah chapter 5 and verse 4. Therefore I said, surely these are poor. They are foolish, for they know not the way of the Lord, nor the judgment of their God. I will get me unto the great men and will speak unto them, for they have known the way of the Lord and the judgment of their God. But these have altogether broken the yoke and burst the bonds. Wherefore, a lion out of the forest shall slay them, and a wolf of the evening shall spoil them. A leopard shall watch over their cities. Every one that goeth out thence shall be torn in pieces because their transgressions are many and their backslidings are increased. So who are these people that are torn in pieces? They are, um, they're defeated. They're easy prey for the devil, if you please. These are those who know not the way of the Lord nor the judgment of their God. But, but Jeremiah said, I will get me unto the great men and speak unto them because they have known the way of the Lord and they do know the judgment of their God. So listen to me very carefully. Whenever you leave the way of the Lord... You're never going to get strength from God. In fact, you'll be torn in pieces in life. You'll be easy prey for the devil. The Bible says the devil is as a roaring lion walking about seeking whom he may devour. You'll be easy prey when you leave the way of the Lord. But there's strength to succeed. It's found when you are in the way of the Lord. When you do live in God's will and you do follow biblical teachings and you are trying to be holy like God is holy, and you are separating yourself from the world and, and embracing God's course of life, the biblical worldview, or his mode of action, guess what? God says, I'll always give you strength. So this morning, if there's anything inside of you that wants to succeed as a Christian, you need strength. And there are four places that you can get strength in the Christian life. Number one, in the house of God. Number two, in serving the Lord. Number three, in closeness to God. And then number four, in the way of the Lord. If you need strength, you go to those four sources and you will always have strength to succeed. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much, so much for being our God. Thank you, Lord for giving us the strength we need to succeed. Thank you, Lord, for being so true and so real and for blessing us, for loving us, for saving us, for putting up with us, for giving us mercy, for giving us forgiveness and your compassions. They're great. They fail not. We just simply love you, dear Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you for all that you do. Now, Father, bless these people. I know that some people, life is very difficult very challenging, very hard. But Lord, give us all strength. Give us strength to succeed. Our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed this morning. If you're here, if you're not saved, please let me know. You can get saved today. If you're here this morning and you need to be baptized, let me know. You can be baptized today. If you're here this morning, and you need strength from God, or God spoke to you about why you haven't had the strength that you, that you need to succeed, please let God have his way in your life today. Make whatever decision God wants you to make during this invitation. Shall we stand? The pianist will begin to play. If God spoke to your heart, you come to the altar and pray.